Hi everyone, welcome to the next edition of our Chat with the Experts here at the Unlock MLS and Austin Board of Realtors. I'm Kalea Youngblood, your Chief Marketing Officer, and I'm joined with the fabulous Alexia Smokler. She is from the uh, National Association of Realtors and she's the Director of Fair Housing Policy and Programs. Welcome, Alexia. Thank you for joining us. We are so privileged to have you fly in, albeit 24 hours, um, for our Diversity Summit today. Uh, we're going to talk about fair housing in general, how advocacy efforts play a role in fair housing, um, and just what is going on in, through the lens of all of these NAR settlement rules changes. And so today, we're just going to have a quick conversation about that and um, really just hope our audience has uh, just some takeaways on things that they should be thinking about with regards to best practices. So let's kick it off. Welcome. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. It is my absolute pleasure. I hope you had fun today at the Diversity Summit. I did. Great group of folks. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about what specific steps should realtors take to ensure compliance with the new MLS rules while maintaining fair housing practices. Let's kick it off with that. Sure. Well, look, first of all, this is a new landscape. So, you know, we're, we're seeing how things play out in the market and we'll be reacting. But I can tell you, you know, what we're thinking about as we get started here. So there's two major requirements of the settlement. Um, the buyer broker agreements and removing offers of compensation from the MLS. So let's talk about each one, the fair housing challenges that may arise from each of these changes. Great. So buyer broker agreements. Um, this is going to create new conversations with buyers perhaps that folks haven't been having before. Um, now look, the, the class action plaintiffs who filed this case, what they wanted was individualized negotiations, individualized arrangements with each buyer. And, and that's great, that's fine. But the hallmark of fair housing compliance is consistency, or as our code of ethics calls it, equal professional service. Mm -hmm. So as you're negotiating and, and coming to different arrangements with different buyers, you're gonna be treating people differently. And so that can become dangerous from a fair housing point of view if those differences seem to be like they're the result of the buyer's race or their national origin, their sex, or other protected characteristics. So we have to make sure that when we're presenting these agreements and we're having these conversations with our clients, that we're opening that conversation in the same way with everybody. So have a script, ensure your consistency. Then if your brokerage is offering different levels of service, different levels of pricing, you need to offer those same options mm -hmm. to everybody and let the, ch the client choose what's right for them. You know, what we've seen is that when there is discretion, that's when the risk of bias creeps in. So mm -hmm. let me give you an example. Loan officers were found liable under the Fair Housing Act for the way they treated borrowers who failed to qualify. Mm. They kept working with white buyers who failed to qualify they sent the black buyers away. Mm -hmm. So was it unintentional? Was it intentional? It doesn't matter. It, all of it is a violation. So we have to have these guardrails in place that as we're negotiating, as we're using discretion and coming to different arrangements, that we're giving everybody the same opportunities so that not, we're not ending up with different results based on people's identities. Mm -hmm. Um, so switching over to talking about working with sellers. Now, you know, this advice is pretty much the same um, anytime you're working with a seller who might be discriminating. And, and let me back up and remind everybody that the Fair Housing Act applies to sellers. Um, and sellers, we've seen many cases of sellers violating the Fair Housing Act. You know, w one example is the seller who refused to, to sign uh, the contract when she saw that the buyer's name was Ebony. So in this, in this new environment, more sellers may decline to offer compensation to buyer agents, mm -hmm. and that's their choice. Mm -hmm. um, but if they are declining compensation or offering different compensation because the buyer or the buyer agent's identity, now we have a problem. Got it. So the advice in these situations where you have a seller who might be discriminating is always the same. You need to remind your seller that the Fair Housing Act applies to them. You have to take good notes, report this to your broker, 
And if your seller refuses to change, then you have to part ways. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important to, to note that you really need to be in lockstep with your broker. What mm -hmm. are the company policies that you have? What are the consistencies that you're putting into place? What are the checks, checklists? I remember when I sold, it was all about the checklist and ensuring mm -hmm. that um, you are consistent across the board. And so I, I think that that's just a good reminder for everybody that it's both buyers and sellers in that scenario. So now that we've talked about um, the consistency of business practices with regards, to, you know, through the lens of the settlement, what are the most important fair housing practices to keep in mind when working with buyers just in general? Let's just level set from the beginning. All right. So it's it's all about equal professional service and consistency. Um, so that begins with policies and practices. And I know people are busy and you know, sometimes it might be hard to stick with those, but it's really crucial that, you know, we follow these practices so that we're treating everybody the same. That means whoever walks into your door, you're asking them the same questions. What are they looking for in a home? What is their budget? You know, it, it's not that deep, you know, just ask everybody the same questions and then listen. So we have to be careful that implicit bias um, doesn't become a problem and doesn't keep us from really listening to our clients and what they want. You know, implicit bias means that we tend to categorize people, and we all do this. It's the way our human brains work. We want shortcuts. We want to make sense of the world. So we categorize people. We think, I can move through my day more quickly this way. So, But what if your categories are based on stereotypes? What if you're prejudging someone because of their identity? that might stop you from really listening to what they want and need. And really that undermines the level of service you're providing if you're not really listening. Right. So if you're making assumptions about where someone wants to live, what kind of a house they want based on their identity, you're not providing them the best service and you might be discriminating. So become aware of your own biases. We all have them because we all want shortcuts. We all want to move through our day faster. Mm -hmm. um, but we have to slow down. And I know people don't like to do that. We have to slow down those quick assumptions so that we can ask everybody the same questions, really listen to their answers, and then take them where they want to go. And this helps us avoid the very common fair housing problem of steering, mm. which is directing people towards or away from specific neighborhoods based on their identity. We don't want to assume where someone wants to live based on their identity. We want to ask them and have them tell us. Right, yeah. Um, it was a really interesting conversation today we had at the Diversity Summit with regards to advocacy and how advocacy mm -hmm. plays such a role in sort of the underpinning of fair housing mm -hmm. and really also through the, the lens of the NAR, NAR mm -hmm. settlement. I keep saying the lens, but it's true. We're kind of facing this new reality and um, gut check on our business practices. Mm -hmm. So talk to us a little bit about how advocacy really plays a role in all of this. So here's what I like to say about fair housing. First, do no harm. That means don't discriminate. That means get your policies and practices in place make sure you're treating people the same. Okay, but that's just level one. Don't discriminate, that's just the basics. Now, how can we level up? Mm -hmm. and, and that's about expanding opportunities, particularly for groups who've been historically shut out due yeah. to the previously discriminatory practices of our industry, the government, and others. Okay, so that means things like um, learning about what down payment assistance and special purpose credit programs are available in your area, getting acquainted with those different lenders, your HUD certified housing counselors. And then it's about advocating for these things. So if you're seeing that your market isn't serving buyers at all price points, you know, that's going to create a problem because if there's not an on-ramp into home ownership, then people can't level up. And we're seeing the, the lowest number of first-time buyers since we started recording the data because mm. of affordability problems. Mm -hmm. And so this is where advocacy comes in because the rubber meets the road uh, on affordability at the local level because we need more housing supply. Nationwide, we're 5 million units short. I know in Austin, you, you, you're, you're short some units. Um, but, we, but we run into barriers when we're advocating for housing supply because of NIMBYs. Um, Tell us what a NIMBY is. So that stands for not in my backyard, and that's for people who oppose all new housing development. And, you know, there's this idea that if you build new housing, it's going to bring down property values. And some of that is, is tied into some, 
some um, not very pleasant um, feelings that people have about, about different groups. But the data actually shows that building more housing raises property values. Um, so realtors really need to be in the room advocating for more housing um, and overcoming this opposition because mm -hmm. it's strong. Yeah, we like to say that opportunity equals options and options equal opportunity. And mm -hmm. so um, when it comes to all price points, it creates just a, a plethora of opportunity within the city corridors, um, housing for all, and that includes our teachers and our firefighters and our um, labor workers and all of the things that we need to make a city thrive. So I really appreciate that reminder um, and really just exposing that myth that mm -hmm. you know more density equals lower price points and and or not it continues to raise the prices like mm -hmm. you said so we're a big advocate for education around here mm -hmm. and we have we put on you know on any given day we have behind the scenes abor on air classes going on with live broadcast we have abor on demand where you can take a course at three in the morning if you want we've got um uh online through aceable asian third party uh, supplier and, and vendor for us. What is NAR doing to offer education with regards to fair housing and what should our members be really paying attention to with regards to upping their education? Well, it's been my privilege to lead the development of two amazing, if I do say so myself, uh, new fair housing uh, trainings that NAR has put out in the in the last couple of years. So the first one is Fair Haven, mm -hmm. and that is our online um, simulation where you're going into a fictional town and you're going into different scenarios that are based on real live fair housing cases um, and you're trying to sell homes and you're confronting discrimination. Now in a lot of these situations it's some other party that's discriminating. It might be you're representing the seller or the, the buyer and the seller's discriminating. Maybe it's the lender who's discriminating. Um, and so Fairhaven is really about standing up for your clients and, and learning how to confront those problems in kind of real, real life situations. Now, the other special sauce of Fairhaven is that we then flip the script and now you're in the client's shoes and you're trying to buy a house and someone's discriminating against you. And, you have, and, and you're sort of a little bit put into the position of, oh, wow, what would that be like if that happened to me? Mm -hmm. And then we follow that up with video testimonials of real people uh, who have experienced discrimination. Because, you know, we still have a lot of members who say that this isn't, this isn't really a thing. Mm -hmm. I've never seen it. It, it doesn't exist. Um, but when folks see these videos, uh, it really, you know, we wanted people not to just teach people's minds. We wanted to open people's hearts. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think these stories really do that. Now, I'm excited to tell you that we're working on Fairhaven 2.0. Oh, it's going to launch in 2025, and we're going to be adding new scenarios. We're, we've added one on sexual harassment. We've added emotional support animals, um, more scenarios about steering. Um, and these are all, you know, situations that you might encounter in your daily business. Mm -hmm. We've also added the Fairhaven Historical Society, where oh, you can learn about the history of housing segregation through these really neat um, animated videos that are done in this collage style where we take um, old documents and photos and they're animated and brought to life. Um, so I think, I personally think it's gonna be the best fair housing training out there. Um, now our, our other training that we've launched Let by Let me stop you real quick yep. on, uh, on Fairhaven because I have taken <laughs> it. And um, you know, in every busy realtor's life, you're like, oh, you know, I, another thing I have to do in Texas, we are one of the states that has the most education requirements for license renewal. So it's kind of, you know, a bear and, you know, you're busy and then you're like, oh, my gosh, my license renewal. Um, this does offer credit if you need it. It also supports the upcoming code of ethics requirement for the three hours of fair housing that's going to be coming up in your next um, renewal cycle. So just keep that in mind. This is a great opportunity. You can start and stop it at any point also, which was I really liked. So, you know, it's mobile friendly and all of that. Mm -hmm. Um, but I will say, just to give another shout out to it, it was very well produced, um, so it didn't feel gimmicky. You know, mm -hmm. when, you, when you hear animation, you're like, okay. But it really wasn't, and so I do have to give a, a bit of a shout out on the production of it. I thought it was well done. Thank so you. So tell us about, there's another one that you also wrote. Yes. Tell us about that. So that one is our classroom course called Bias Override. 
and that's all about implicit bias. So we take a deep dive into how our human brains work um, and how th this tendency that I mentioned earlier to create shortcuts and to, and to stereotype people. Mm -hmm. And we confront um, some, some difficult, difficult issues and there's often, you know, tears. It's and uncomfortable. We, yes. Um, but um, I think it, once again, you know, it touches people's hearts, it opens people's minds. And then we leave you with some real actionable takeaways about how to confront your own bias. Mm -hmm. um, you know, things like just spending more time with people who don't look like you mm -hmm. and not just at work because, you know, most of us have fairly diverse workplaces, but I'm talking about outside of work, in your social life. Um, you know, exposing yourself to different um, um, stories in the media, movies, books that tell different kinds of stories about different groups that aren't stereotypical. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of other um, tips that are offered in the course to help you kind of critically look at yourself and begin to break down your biases. So you're seeing clients as individuals, you're really listening to them and giving them what they want, not mm -hmm. what you think they need. Yeah, yeah. And we do offer that course here at the Awesome Board of Realtors. It's free. Come on down. We're definitely um, anxious to put it on. And I know we do that a couple times a year. So Fantastic. excellent job on that as well. <laughs> so looking you. forward, what additional fair housing initiatives or changes might we see from NAR? I know you talked about Fairhaven 2.0. Mm -hmm. um, to, be to better further support uh, realtor members in this arena. So... We launched a major fair housing initiative a couple of years ago after the Newsday documentary mm, yeah. out of Long Island was yeah, released. Yeah. And, and I would urge any of your members who haven't watched the hidden camera videos, go look up uh, Long Island Divided and watch it because it's really a case study in what not to do if you want to stay on the right side of, of the law. And we saw in those hidden camera videos that we had a lot of work to do. Yeah. Um, so we launched, and so we launched this new initiative. And so part of it was creating those two trainings. Mm -hmm. um, we've also launched a self-testing program oh. for real estate brokers. Oh. So in this program, um, a broker can raise their hand and say, "Test me. Test my agents." And we work with a nonprofit uh, testing agency who will test the agents and give the broker a confidential report. Oh. Um, and, you know, there has been a lot of interest from, you know, there's some brokers who say, oh, no yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's plenty who say, okay, come on in. I want to see down. how we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and so we do the testing and we give them the report and then we come in and train them. And th these trainings are really interesting because the testers come in and the agents get to kind of quiz them and grill them and, have a really fruitful back and forth about what was uncovered. And, and I should say that most of what we uncover, it's not anything egregious or intentional. It's most of this implicit bias type stuff, right. like paying less attention to certain people, not returning certain people's phone calls. Oh, and I've got to tell you, speaking of returning phone calls, I mean, one mm. issue we found across the board was there wasn't such a, a good um, rate of uh, returning consumer inquiries. So... That's less of a fair housing issue, more of a customer service right. issue. Um, so the self-testing is one thing that we've launched. We've also been looking at licensure laws mm -hmm. and um, what other their education requirements, which I'm glad to hear that Texas has strong ones. You know, half the states don't require any fair housing training to get yeah, a real estate recently, license. Yeah, just recently, I sit on the Texas Real Estate Commission's Education Standards Advisory mm -hmm. Committee and they've added um, an additional whole block in our required legal two section for just for fair housing. So I'm anxious and hopeful to see that maybe NAR would allow that to be in compliance with this new requirement, but more to come on that. So yes, it's very much top of mind here. Well, yeah. I think it, it should be. Um, it, it's the same process as approving an uh, alternative code of ethics training. Yeah, right, um, right. But yeah, so um, a couple of years back, we uncovered that half the states don't require any fair housing training. And mm -hmm. we we put that message out there, and now we're beginning to see that more states are adopting fair housing training. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, going forward, um, I inherited some legacy fair housing reference materials, kind of, you know, 15, 20 years old. And they were PDFs and brochures, and we were asked to update them. But... I, I did some talking to some realtors and found out that they wanted video. Mm -hmm. So 
Um, we're planning on creating a video series, just two, three minutes, quick um, snapshot of different fair housing, um, you know, frequently asked questions. So we hope to have like a resource library on our website. If you, you want to know about how do I talk about schools, um, mm. steering, you'll be able to go in and get a quick three minute video on that. So we love good snackable content, snackable. right? It's quick and exactly. easy and we can watch <laughs> it and, and say, okay, I got that aha moment and I'm gonna move on. Yep. Well, Alexia, is there any last parting words that you wanna share with our members? We again, um, we were joking with Alexia that we only got her for 24 hours, but we're gonna get her back to Austin and she did such a wonderful job with our diversity committee and summit today. Are there any parting words you'd like to share with our membership about fair housing? Yeah, I, I think first do no harm, don't discriminate, but that's just level one. So I'm challenging everybody to go to level two, which is repair the harm caused by previous uh, discrimination, which left some people much farther behind when it comes to generational wealth. Mm -hmm. Some people in America have been boosted by government programs, um, to support home ownership going all the way back to the Great Depression. Those folks over generations, and they're, they're white, have been able to own homes, pass that wealth down to their children, and now their children are, are able to use that equity. Right. Um, other groups were locked out of all those programs until almost 1970, so they're starting from behind. Um, so level two is to talk about how can we expand home ownership opportunity to those folks that were previously left behind. And that's learning about your local programs, um, down payment assistance, et cetera, but also the advocacy piece, whether that's advocating for housing supply, whether that's advocating for um, programs with lenders um, to make housing more, more available. Great. Well, I'm going to end on that note. That was wonderful. Um, please be sure to check out abor.com. Uh, we have a volunteer page and a way to get engaged with us on these conversations, whether it be advocacy or a diver our diversity committee or any other uh, really just volunteer and engagement opportunities with us. So thanks again for being here. And we'll see you next time with Chat with the Expert. Mm -hmm.